So making a uh, plate is a little bit different from making a ball or a, a cylinder because the base is wider. So when you are centering, you might want to push out so that the base will be wider. Okay, and then uh, start to drill the hole. So after initial drill, in the meantime, since I'm making a plate, so I'm pushing this, the rim a little bit lower. Okay, push it down this way too. and check to see if the uh, thickness is right okay a little bit more than quarter of an inch and then I'm going to push the uh, inside corner toward the right hand side I use my thumb, the finger is holding on the outer part to support it, raise it. And then this finger, the left and the thumb is pushing the wall. And slowly spread it out. Before I go further, I want to come back here to a smooth the bottom and keep on pushing it until uh, the uh, the wall is a bit thinner And I'm using the finger tip to move the clay, it's easier. Small area create more pressure to the surface. Right then, then I'm, the wall here, I'm pinching and then slightly move up and then a little bit hour since I'm making a plate. Right, so that's good. And then um, I'm going to uh, compress the bottom yeah, using my four inches rip to wet it and 
uh, hold it three fingers here so that it doesn't slip up fingers slip up from my fingers and then um, for making a plate uh, you might want to hold the rib a little bit more horizontal this way instead of using that if you're making a bowl you could go a little bit straight but when you're making a plate hold it more horizontal right so complex in it and um, a lot of a texture from the wood um, a lot of lines from the wood texture so uh, I will use a uh, metal rig to smooth it out um, the uh, metal rib versus the uh, wooden my wooden rib is a little bit different because the wooden rib there's a curve here so even you cross the center you will be fine but if you are using the metal rib if you cross over your metal is your rib is gonna gouge the clay and then uh, you will you'll see that the unpleasant mark there so if you are using something that is thinner make sure you try to compress it away from the very center maybe a one eighth of inch away from the very center and so if your wheel is spinning counterclockwise from there to your right and slightly bending the, the rib Oh, one eighth quarter inch away from it and slowly moving all right and then uh, I like to have a little bit of a, a rim here a little bit wider so what I'm gonna do is my index finger kind of push from the outside part and the fingers inside push that against my index finger i'll make it a make a little wider rim And then use the uh, metal rib to uh, compress with my frame right finger support underneath. Right, so about well, three pounds. Most of the uh, clay is for the base. Um, the base I leave a bit thicker, a little bit more than quarter of an inch. Um, I will show you the uh, trimming. Alright, uh, I'm ready to trim this plate I, let, I made uh, two days ago. I let it dry slowly and uh, the rim actually dry faster so uh, I constantly come into my studio and then uh, brush some water over, use a sponge to uh, wet the rim so they uh, dry it uh, more evenly. Now I'm ready to trim. Before I trim, I also like to uh, check the thickness of the bottom before I trim and uh, the uh, thickness uh, the tumble stick also checking the the thickness my uh, invention measuring tool uh, it's too short to uh, cross over and check it so you can buy uh, two ruler or two pedal bar or whatever two wooden ball and 
crossover so you can increase the size whatever you like a very wide uh, platter you can also check it as long as you find something that is long enough to extend it right so basically what you do is you check the center place this right in the center and check it and the center and check it and uh, I already checked it's uh, 40 uh, 44 and then uh, you move this out to the side and you check from the top of the uh, ru the ruler the parallel ruler to the bottom uh, 53 so I checked it already and uh, you subtract the difference from here to the bottom okay from the top to the center you check it and from the top to the wheel head you subtract the difference that's the thickness okay it's a very uh, simple and easy way to to know exactly how thick the bottom before you start it And I wrote it down in case uh, I forgot 53 and 44 and uh, you subtract is 9 millimeters so the center I know that I have a 9 millimeters and I like to trim it within uh, 4 millimeters okay so meaning I could go down 5 okay 5 millimeter deep and uh, so when I'm trimming I can uh, measure constantly and check it until I hit five and then I stop all right so first center secure the uh, plate so it doesn't move and then I will show you in uh, time-lapse mode so uh, it will save you some time to watch it but I show you the full process in time-lapse mode So pretty quick uh, time last move. So pretty quick, I trim the foot. I leave a little bit of a uh, clay in the middle and uh, put my stamp here, stamp. And uh, this will be the supporting uh, because when the the base is wider, usually if you don't have a support, it's easy to uh, sag to slump. So. That little uh, uh, bump here to uh, support it also put my name there so uh, I put my stem there as a decoration and uh, to show you the uh, the, the depth that I just cut in it's exactly five okay so uh, meaning I have a four millimeters a year um, after I remove the clay here the clay sometimes is in the way and I won't be able to trim so I have to remove it, uh, carefully remove it so that the whole piece still stay in the center and just use a, a trimming tool to remove the clay here so that the line is more uh, consistent with the curve here. Okay, so that's the uh, the view of how I trim the foot. So I decided to uh, put the black slip here on the rim, and then I carved inside. I have a pattern. So this is the pattern I um, I downloaded from the internet. You can find a lot of uh, pattern, interest pattern, and then uh, you download it and uh, do a little bit of uh, uh, enlarge or shrink so you could get the pattern to fit your size. I enlarge it. And then uh, I'm just going to put it here in the middle and then trace it and then use my Scofilo tool to cut the outline. 
and I will show you later after I do the uh, uh, black slip and a little bit chatter on the rim. So the uh, slip is different from under glazes. Slip is made out of uh, uh, clay. So it's the, the chemical compound, compound is similar to the clay. So uh, usually uh, you put it on your leather heart or maybe a, you don't want to put it on the bone dry clay. Okay, put it on the leather heart clay and let it dry a little bit. Uh, you don't want to chatter right away or do the carving right away. You have to uh, get the uh, moisture closer to, together with your clay body. So uh, usually after you brush your slip, you want to do the carving, let it sit for a, a while and then you come back and, and uh, do the uh, chattering or do the carving. Right, so I'm going to put chattering texture on the rim for the uh, slip decoration. So you'll see the contrast. And then I told you the uh, I download this from internet and then enlarge it. So I'm gonna trace the uh, pattern in the middle. Make sure I have it in the center. All right, so that's pretty good. And then uh, let me just use the uh, ball pen to uh, trace it but it's still curved so i have to uh, push it let's we'll start from this corner right so i got it covered all the way from the beginning so you can see that i uh, kind of uh, transfer the uh, pattern on my clay um, the wall is still uh, a tiny, tiny little bit soft, so I'll wait a little bit longer, so wait until it dry a little bit further, and then I'm using my Scorpito tool to do all the carbon. So the uh, Scorpito tools. I have uh, three different sizes, large, medium, and small. So I'll probably use the uh, medium one to uh, to the carbon and then uh, maybe put some lines there. Okay, so I will show you later. Right, so after a uh, dry it uh, maybe 30 minutes, one hour, a um, little bit drier. Um, I'm going to use my Scorpito tool to uh, do all the carbon, all the line uh, decoration uh, to carve it a little bit deeper. And I will use the uh, timeless mode so that uh, you will save time, but you can see the whole process. Alright, so the uh, time lasts more so you will see the whole process. Uh, took me about uh, 30 minutes to do all the uh, carving. It's not bad. Okay, and uh, the result looks good. And uh, so these are the uh, carving tools that I uh, was using it. I used the medium one and the uh, small one for the very fine lines. I haven't had a chance to use the larger one yet, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, 
So these are the uh, uh, Scorfilo tools that uh, you can pick up from my uh, Etsy shop, etsy.com, uh, and type in my name, H-S-I-N-C-H-O-E-N-O. Just search the Scorfilo tool. Uh, that it should pop out a whole bunch of them, uh, different uh, manufacturers, but uh, I, I like my tools. And uh, stay very sharp and uh, three uh, different sizes. And this is the uh, result. Scovito and the chattering texture, um, tracing the pattern, and then I use the uh, Scovito tool to do all the very fine line carving. And uh, this is the uh, result. Looks good. And uh, very easy to get the uh, download. You can download it from the internet. Just uh, type in the keyword pattern. It should pop out a lot of them, and uh, you can download it, screenshot as a, a copy, and then um, put it on the uh, uh, software that uh, like page that you paste it in, and then uh, you can enlarge it. Maybe in the future I'll do the uh, a video showing you how to uh, how to do that. Okay, just take down the, the pattern and uh, use that to trace it. It's very easy to trace it, and the result looks good. Right. Hope this uh, demonstration helped, and I will see you next time.